we all were uh, positioned in various locations within the garage. The belly chains and handcuffs were removed from Mr. Brooks. He did not have leg restraints on that I could see. And uh, so when the jury was brought in, uh, he was not in any of that. And then I instructed the jurors at that point, uh, our civilian bailiff, Michael, was in the lead. I said, please come in, uh, walk around the vehicle one time slowly with the jurors. Subject matter jurisdiction, Your Honor. The court's declining to address that further. I stand by my written decision that was entered last week. So we won't be proving it for the record? I stand by my written decision that was entered last week, sir. Judicial determination? It, it is a judicial determination. Were you present when any items were discovered that were uh, relevant? Yes, I was. And just very briefly describe what those items were, sir. Objection meeting. <coughs> a blue sandal um, up against a fence area that separates the Dunbar neighborhood or street uh, homes from the Maple Avenue apartment complex. From that sandal, um, some other investigators did locate a sweatshirt and a left-footed blue sandal. Now, in addition to looking for items, uh, did you and other detectives attempt, attempt to obtain video from homeowners and businesses in the area? Objection, leading. Um, overall, this foundational witness may answer. Yes, we did. And do you recall obtaining a video from the school district? Yes, we did. And do you recall what building or buildings uh, from the school district uh, video was recovered? from? Objection, Did you also obtain video from uh, homeowners on Dunbar? Objection, leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, we did. Uh, specifically 435 Dunbar? Correct. Overruled. It's foundational. <coughs> objection. Directly to the video. Your objection is noted. It is overruled. Exhibit 131 in, in its entirety is received. And did you ask for permission to publish? I did. Go ahead. And, uh, I'm going to ask that we play this clip, Your Honor, and for the record, it's a total of 20.81 seconds. Go ahead. Objection. Your objection's noted. Go ahead and play. What do we see in slide number six? Upper left hand corner is a still shot of the video and below that is a screen capture of a figure in that photo. Okay. With sound on this one, yes, thank you. <laughs> Excuse me. What do we see on this final slide, sir? Upper left-hand corner is a still shot from the video, and the screen that's been cropped at the bottom is an image of the defendant. Detective Bro, um, based on these video clips that you obtained and the canvas uh, that you and your team did in the neighborhood, were you able to put together a map basically tracking um, the travels of Daryl Brooks through the neighborhood that afternoon? Objection. I don't consider to be in court that day in this meeting. The objections are noted, overruled. The witness may answer. Yes. And I should include um, do you know if, uh, do you know the location where Daryl Brooks was arrested? Objection. Yeah. I don't consider to be in court that day in this Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, yeah, I'm aware he was arrested on Elizabeth Street. Okay. And are you aware of uh, reports to other officers as far as citizens that had contact with Mr. Brooks <coughs> in the area of Elizabeth Street? Objection. I don't consider to be called in. Noted. The witness may answer. Yes, I'm aware. 
All right. Uh, behind you, sir, is a large poster board that's facing backwards. I'm going to ask you to please assist me by putting that face forward on the easel behind you. And we're also going to put up the digital copy, Your Honor. I just wanted to. Oh, okay. Um, then that's fine then. Okay. Thank you. I'll have him work off the digital copy. But before you sit down, Detective Rowe, sure. in the bottom right-hand corner of that poster board, there is a sticker. Do you see that? Yes, an objection leading. Thank you. Detective Rowe, do you believe that Exhibit 130 is an accurate summary of uh, the, the travels and the contacts uh, by Mr. Brooks on the evening of November 21, 2021? Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes. Uh, move to admit 130 and permission to publish, Your Honor. Objection. Um, I'm sorry. I cut you off. What's the basis, if you have? Relevancy. All right. Uh, your objection is noted. It is overruled. The northern uh, most event that's reflected on the map reads what? Officer Skelton shoots at SUV at 4.39 p.m. Okay. Do you know that to be accurate based on your knowledge of this investigation? Objection leading. And then there appears to be a red line from that point going south down the middle or uh, right side of the map. Do you see where I'm referring to, sir? Objection yes, leading. And where did it go? What roads? Objection leading. I'm going to ask Ms. Gussie to please um, zoom in on that upper right-hand quadrant of the exhibit, please. And specifically um, the area of 338 Maple, please. Okay. So um, you said the vehicle traveled through the backyards at off of Prospect Court, is that right? That's right. Can you point out the path of the vehicle that you just were describing for us? When it turns off of Prospect Court, is that a road? Yes. I'm sorry. When it left Prospect, I'm sorry. Sir, which question? Sorry. Which question were you objecting to? The last one. About which way it turned? Or turning onto Prospect? The way it was actually. So the line you drew from south from Prospect Court represents what, sir? Objection leading. Do you see a blue dot in the same area we're talking about here? Objection leading. What's uh, the address of Les Paul School? Objection. If you know, or the street. I notice the line becomes dashed. Do you see that? Yes. Objection leading. Do you see then, moving back to the uh, left on the map, the two boxes in white? Uh, depicting where the sandals were recovered? Objection, lady. So there's there's two green X's, correct? You see where I'm referring to, sir? Objection, lady. Did we just see the video of him crossing the street there on Dunbar? <coughs> Objection, lady. Did we just see the two videos from those two cameras at the Lindum building in the last exhibit, 131? Objection, lady. Is that the location of Central Avenue, sir? Yes. I'm sorry, 417 Central Avenue? Objection leading. Can you please circle these uh, two conversations that you just identified for us? Objection leading. What's happening in this area, please? Objection speculative. Was that in Exhibit 131 that we just showed the jury? Objection leading. Which video was that one, do you remember? Objection leading. Now at this point the dash line ends, is that right? That's correct. Why is that? Objection speculative. Are you aware that uh, there was a report of contact between Mr. Brooks and a witness identified as Ellen Cordes? I'm sorry, Aaron Cordes? Objection leading. Could you identify Aries Industries? Are you aware of uh, video from that location uh, showing person appearing to be Mr. Brooks approaching the front door lobby of the business. Objection, I don't consent to being called that name again. Noted, the witness may answer. <coughs> Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes. Okay. Do you believe uh, this map is an accurate documentation of the investigation, again, as to the uh, travel of Daryl Brooks this evening, on the evening of November 21, 21? Objection, speculative, and I don't consent to being called that name. Your objections are noted. Overruled. 
I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Sure. Do you believe uh, this map is an a accurate summary of the travel and whereabouts of Daryl Brooks at various points on the evening of November 21-21? Objection, speculative, and I don't consent to being caught that day. Your objections are noted. They are overruled. The witness may answer. Yes. All right, thank you, Detective. I don't have any other questions. Any cross-exam for this witness, sir? Yep. All right, thank you. Begin when you're ready. <coughs> so, Officer Rowe, uh, uh, you repeatedly referred to the alleged defendant's name. How did you come into that uh, information? Based on the entirety of the investigation. And when did you come into the knowledge of the alleged defendant's name? I don't remember. Uh, when did your part of the investigation start? Um, after he drove the SUV through the parade, I was called at home to come in and uh, help the departments with the investigation. And just so we clear for the record, is the jury asking you questions or me? I'm sorry, I did not hear the question. Question. Well, I was referring to when I asked a question, he turns towards the jury as if they're the ones asking the question. That's not a question, Your Honor. It, it is a question. We did ask a question about that. Yes. I think you're asking why does he do that to that extent the witness may answer. I'm here to present the case to the jury. I follow that fundamentally. But for the sake of making sure you hear the questions right, wouldn't it be fair to say that you should pay attention to the questions being answered, or being asked, rather? Assumes the fact, not in evidence. Sustain this to the form of the question. Please rephrase. Wouldn't it make sense to focus on the questions so you can, can hear them clearly? Objection argumentative still assumes the fact not in evidence. Sustained. You made reference to you being here to present the case to the jury. So is that the reason why you decided to testify? Objection to the relevance. Grounds. Oh, overrule the witness may answer. I don't understand your question. Uh, were you able to hear my question clearly? I don't understand your question. Were you able to hear my question clearly? Objection argumentative, Your Honor. Sustained. Next question, please. Or rephrase the previous question to the one that was asked just now. What, what was... What was not understood about the question that you were asked? Objection, argumentative. Grounds. Um, sustained as to the form of the question. Please rephrase. What wasn't clear about what I was asking? Same objection, Your Honor. Grounds. It's, the objection is sustained. Let's go back and ask the question that he says he didn't understand and, and rephrase it, please, or move on. Your choice. Was your sole reason for testifying here today? Objection relevance. Okay. Let's let Mr. Brooks get the question out. Go oh, ahead. Just, I thought that was it. Are you testifying today strictly to prove your case to the jury? Objection, misstatement of his testimony. Grounds, that that's what he said. Sustained as to the form of the question, misstates the prior testimony. That's what he said. So why did you, why did you decide to testify here today? Objection, that's a legally inaccurate question, Your Honor. Please rephrase the question. I'm sustaining 
the question asked as to the form of the question. I don't know how I'm supposed to rephrase that. Without having the same form of the question, that helps. I'll rule if there's an objection, but ask a question, please. <laughs> Did you seek to testify here today in this matter? No. So how did you ultimately come to that decision? Objection, that's a misstatement, Your Honor. It was not his decision. Sustained as to the form of the question assumes a fact, not an evidence. Were you subpoenaed? Yes. Do you recall by whom you were subpoenaed to testify? Uh, District Attorney Sue Opper from the Washington County District Attorney's Office. And at that time you were subpoenaed, you decided to testify? I don't believe it's my decision. Well, it would be fair to say that you didn't have to show up, right? Would that be fair to say? No, I had to show up. But would it be fair to say that you could have chosen not to? No, it would not be fair to say that. Exhibit 131 that was shown to you, uh, have you seen that video footage before today? Yes, I have. Do you recall who showed it to you before today? I don't recall who showed it to me. Would it be fair to say you've seen it multiple times before today? Yes, I've seen it a number of times. And do you recall when you were first shown that video? Not off the top of my head. Was it the same day of the incident, the days following, sometime after? I don't recall when I saw the video the first time. And what about uh, Exhibit 130? Had you seen that video footage before today? Objection, Your Honor, 130 is a map. Well, the map. Had you seen the map before today? I'm, I don't really think it. Just for the record, I'll um, sustain the objection just because it referenced the wrong number, but I believe you rephrased. So go ahead, the witness may answer. Can I ask the question again, please? Had you seen the map of Exhibit 130 before today? Yes, I have. Multiple times as well? Yes, numerous times. Any idea why you viewed it so many times, multiple times? Unsure. Were you able to obtain any more information upon seeing the map numerous times that you didn't obtain when first seeing the map? No. So it would be fair to say you pretty much knew what the map was detailing each and every time you saw it? Yes. And on that map exhibit 130 you made reference to at some point the the dotted line and it, it stops at some point that be fair to say could you be more specific the the dotted line that was that was referred to on the map do you want the map brought up would that be helpful to you or maybe it be, might be helpful to him. He's got the large map, but if you want to... So, if you can see the dotted line on the, on the map behind you... Yes. Is it fair to say that the dotted line stops at some point? Around Central Avenue, maybe? Yes, there's a 
couple lines that seem to come to Central Avenue or egress out of Central Avenue that do stop. And you stated that, well, what was the reason that you stated that that line stops, the dotted line? I stated that uh, it's because we don't know the exact location where you cross the street to get over to Elizabeth Street. And why, what, were there no cameras present at that point or how, how did, how did you lose the path of travel at that point? We didn't find any cameras or any eyewitnesses in that area. So it would be fair to say at that point you weren't, you weren't sure what happened? I know, I know that you crossed the street at some point. We just don't know where. How do you know that? Because you were arrested on Elizabeth Street. Did you see any crossing of, I think you said that was West? Would that be West Avenue that you were referring to that you don't see any crossing of? What's your question? Is that West Avenue that you stated that you don't see, that you didn't see any crossing of? That is Northwest Avenue. Or Northwest Avenue, I'm sorry, I, I don't know the streets. Northwest Avenue. And you don't have any visual, visual footage or any eyewitnesses, as you said, to say for sure if Northwest Avenue was crossed. We didn't obtain any witness statements or any eyewitness or any uh, video of the suspect crossing the street. What day were you doing your part of the investigation? Was that the same evening or the next few days after the, the incident? Or uh, Can you clarify which investigation you're talking about? <coughs> the one that you took part in, your part of the, the investigation. Are you, I'm not, I don't understand uh, what time frame you're asking for. What day, what, what day did you start your part of the investigation? Well, we started the investigation as soon as he ran people over in the parade. And you were there? I responded to the parade after he had done that. Were you at the parade? No, I was not. So it would be fair to say you were on call? No, I was not. So it would be fair to say you don't know when your part of the investigation started then, right? would not be fair to say that. You don't recall what time it was when you started your part of the investigation? As soon as I responded. And... You don't recall when you were dispatched to respond? It's in my report. Um, I don't remember the time exactly, but it's in my report. And were you dispatched to any location from that point? I was not dispatched. Were you sent to any location from that point? I was assigned with uh, taking a number of investigators with myself and walking the entire parade route, going from establishment to establishment, bar to bar, restaurant to restaurant, and obtaining phone numbers and names of people who were present at the parade and who had witnessed something and would be um, followed up with later by a member of the Detective Bureau. So it would be fair to say you, you did some interviews at that time? Yes. Do you recall how many? No. And after conducting these interviews, what did you do? I went home. So at that time, after conducting your interviews and then going back to your home, did you have the, the name or idea of any suspects at that time? Yes. And whom were you told by? I recall. 
do you recall who you submitted your typed report to? I don't understand your question. Do you recall who you submitted your typed police report to? No. I'm assuming uh, your law enforcement agency doesn't type up reports and just leave them sitting on the desk. Would that be fair to say? That'd be correct. Any reason why you wouldn't recall who you gave your report to? Well, it's electronically submitted. And from there, does it have a specific uh, sergeant or lieutenant or captain or someone that it goes to from that point, if you recall or if you know? I wouldn't know. So it would be fair to say once you type a report and submit it, you're not sure who sees it? Correct. Would you say it's fair that because of you not knowing who your report is submitted to, that your report can be altered in some kind of way? Especially being that you don't know who sees it? The reports are done via PDF style um, reporting. It's a uh, protected by my username and my password. And when it's submitted, um, it's usually not altered unless I request it to be altered. But it is fair to say that there's a possibility that it could be tampered with because you, you don't know for sure who all sees it. It's entirely inaccurate. How so? My report is accurate. Right? My report is the way that it was written, the way that I wrote it myself. So you've had a chance to read your submitted report after you submitted it? Yes. And to the best of your knowledge, is exactly word for word as you remember typing it? It is my, it is my report, it is what I typed, and it is accurate. Word for word? Yes. Do you recall how many pages long the report was? Objection, relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Not relevant. Do you recall if the report was lengthy? Objection, relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Next question, please. Grounds for the sustain? Relevance. And you stated that you read the report after you submitted it. Do you know how long it was before you were able to see the report that you typed? Objection relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Well, he already answered that. Then I'll object as asked and answered, Your Honor. Sustained. That question wasn't answered, answer, but okay. I see. Do you recall when when you typed your report? Objection relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Not relevant. How's that not relevant if he already answered that he typed your report? Please continue, sir. Grounds for the sustain. Relevance. He answered that he typed a report. So how is it not relevant if he if he recalls reading when he typed it? Please continue, sir. <sighs> Got to be kidding me. Did you file any claim related to this matter? No. Do you know if anyone who did? Did what? Do you know? 
of anyone who filed a claim in relation to this incident? No. Do you know who the plaintiff is in this incident? Jackson Grounds. Robbins. You may answer that question. Go ahead. Can you ask the question again? Do you know who the plaintiff is in this incident? Well, the plaintiff would be the state of Wisconsin. Is the state of Wisconsin a human being or an entity? Objection grounds. Um, sustained on relevance grounds. Have you ever had any interaction with the plaintiff in this incident? Objection. Grounds. Relevant, legally inaccurate. Grounds. Sustained as to the form of the question. Were you ever contacted by the plaintiff in this incident? Same objection. Grounds. Sustained as to the form of the question. Would you call the state of Wisconsin a living, breathing human being? Or That's entity? an answer. Grounds because I didn't ask that question. It's not relevant. Sustained. Next question. It's very relevant. Seems like there's no plaintiff. Jury will disregard statements made by oh, the man. attorneys oh, they, and the parties. They are slick. not evidence. Please Stop ask the no question. Slick. So to your knowledge, the plaintiff is the state of Wisconsin. Do you see him present in the courtroom today? Objection. Irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. Relevant. Can you identify the plaintiff state of Wisconsin? Same objection. Grounds. Sustained. Sir, please continue uh, with and not on this topic. Next question, please. To the best of your knowledge, you're not even sure if you've ever even had any interaction with the plaintiff state of Wisconsin, correct? Objection, argumentative, Grounds. and compound. Grounds. Sustained. Definitely wasn't compound. Would you consider yourself an injured party in this incident? Objection. Grounds. Argumentative. The witness may answer. No. Have you read or seen the complaint? No. No further questions. All right, thank you, sir. Any redirect? No, thank you. All right, thank you, sir. You may step down. Detective Rose should be dismissed, please. And yes, could we get the exhibit? Yeah, why don't you grab that exhibit and take it? My current position is the mechanical inspector for the Wisconsin State Patrol Technical Reconstruction Unit. Can you describe the duties of that position? Overruled, the witness may answer. Um, my job basically is to conduct thorough and systematic inspections of vehicles that have been involved in crashes. Did you receive any training in order to perform those duties? Objection, relevance. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes. Can you briefly describe that training for the jury? Objection, relevance. Overruled, the witness may answer. Prior to this, I was a diesel mechanic, and in addition to that, um, I have ASC and SAE certifications. And not being in having any interest in cars, what are those certifications? Objection, leading. On December 6, 2021, were you directed to go to the Wisconsin State Crime Lab to view a vehicle? Objection, leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. It's foundational. Go ahead. Yes. What information did you have prior to going to that location? Objection, speculative. Um, overruled, the witness may answer. Uh, the information that I was given is that I was to set up an appointment there to look at a uh, Ford Escape that had been involved in a crash in the parade in Waukesha. Did you do a mechanical inspection of the vehicle that you were sent to look at? Objection leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. <clears throat> yes, I did. Did that report containing the findings of your mechanical inspection from December 6th? Objection leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes. I provided to you prior to you going up on the stand what's been marked as Stibit, State's Exhibit 83. Can you briefly um, identify it for um, how it's labeled, how many pages it consists of? Uh, what exhibit is that? <laughs> exhibit 83. It's the uh, Crash Reconstruction Mechanical Inspection Report. Is that the whole report is Exhibit 83? Correct. Yes. The whole report. Go ahead. I haven't ruled on it yet, so go ahead and uh, ask your questions, Attorney Daisy. Sir, how many pages does this report consist of? Ten. 
And that is front and back sides? Correct. Objection. What car were you inspecting? Objection, leading. Oh, overruled the witness my answer. 2010 Ford Escape. And what color was it? Objection, leading. Overruled, you may answer. The vehicle identification number on Exhibit 83, um, where did that information come from? I always use the one inside the door jam of the vehicle first, take note of it, and then cross-reference it with the public VIN on the vehicle to make sure that they both match. And did they in this case? Objection. Uh, I have the 10 pages, and nowhere on here does it say it's exhibit. Nowhere on here. That's because it was marked for purposes of trial. It has an exhibit sticker now. So your objection is noted. It's overruled. And uh, well, the witness... I'm privy to the same. The Thank witness you. may answer the question. It's been marked as an exhibit. And there, is there a picture on the front of Exhibit 83? Yes. Overruled. And what is that picture of? It's a picture of the 2010 escape. That you did the mechanical inspection on? Objection leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes. Is the information contained within this report accurate? Objection leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, it is. I would ask, I would move States Exhibit 83 into evidence. Objection. Your objection is noted. It is overruled. Exhibit 83 is received. So is my paperwork ever going to say Exhibit 83, or is it just going to be easy? Mr. Brooks, I'll take that up outside the presence of the jury later, but we're going to continue. It was Go brought ahead. up in front of the jury. Mr. Brooks, we're going to continue with the questioning of this witness. What is y'all trying to pull over here? Mr. Brooks, please. No one's... The, the exhibit, to my understanding, has previously been provided to you. You have it. It's now been marked as an exhibit for trial purposes. I've got something I don't have, though. Go ahead. That's not how it's supposed to work. It's supposed to be fit. Attorney Basie, I trust that this was previously turned over. It was, and I believe the defendant has a copy of it in front of him. Thank and you. Where does Please it say continue. Exhibit 83? Does it, it doesn't say that this was Again, going to be we'll used Again, we'll take this up outside exhibit. the presence of the jury later. It's not something we need to do right now. Go ahead and ask your questions. Thank you, Your Honor. And I would object and move to strike from the record any commentary that the defendant was making um, in the last five minutes. What was that? Court will strike the commentary that was made. I'm not sure if it was picked up or not. So the first section of your report, and I'm just going to direct your attention to page 3 of Exhibit 83, um, talks about the tires and the suspension and tie rods. Do you see that? Objection leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes. And can you describe for the jury what part of the inspection, describe this part of the inspection. Objection. Overruled, the witness may answer. The report's been received by the, <coughs> by the court, and the state may direct the witness to various points at its discretion. When was it made an exhibit? Because I wasn't aware of that. Sir, can you describe the information contained in the first section of the report under the heading tires, wheels, steering, suspension, brakes? Objection, leading. Overruled. There was a little bit of play in the tie rod. Still attached, um, still intact, still functioning, still able to steer the vehicle, but just worn to the point that it needed replacement before it got any worse. Is that something that would create any problems in operating the car, for example, on November 21st, 2021? Objection is speculative. Overruled, this witness may answer. He's been, um, hold on. He's been qualified under 907-02. Um, I direct your attention to 907-02 through 907-07, Mr. Brooks. Go ahead. I don't consider to be a court that name. That's referring to a specific date. How do we know that's not speculation? Um, the objections noted it's overruled. The witness may answer. 
it would not. The vehicle would still steer and drive just the same as any other vehicle. It would just have play in the steering wheel and it would make a little bit of a clunking noise potentially when you turn the wheel. You would maybe hear a clunking noise from that left front tire on. If I didn't ask you this, um, the information you were provided was that this vehicle was involved in a crash? Objection. Accident hazard. Um, overruled, uh, given the nature of the testimony being provided, uh, the statement clarify that. So go ahead, you may answer. Yes. And did you, do you know the date of that crash? Uh, I know it was in November. I don't know the exact date. Okay, thank you. So with regards to the braking system, was there anything, did you find anything at all in your inspection of that vehicle that would have caused the brakes not to work or not to work effectively on the date of the crash, or prior to the crash? Objection, speculative. Overruled, the witness may answer. No, I did not. Actually, since your inspection took place after the crash, would that be your same answer with regard to as it was on December 6, 2021, there were no brake problems? Objection, speculative. Overruled, the witness may answer. <coughs> that is correct. The brake still functioned at the time of inspection fully. And the curb weight, what is that? I mean, generally, what is it now? Objection, leading. Overruled. If someone had reported hearing a clicking sound while this car was driving in front of them, was there anything that you found in your report that would be consistent with a clicking sound being heard? Objection, hearsay. Overruled, the witness may answer. It would be impossible to say if there would be a clicking noise from this vehicle. I was actually not able to drive it physically to test it. I was only able to just start it. Can I ask why you were unable to drive it? Objection, relevancy. <laughs> Overruled, the witness may answer. Uh, there's actually two reasons I was unable to drive it. One, again, with DNA evidence on the exterior of the vehicle. Two, there wasn't enough gas in the vehicle to move it. Okay. So the car was on empty when you, when you observed it? Objection, leading. Sustained us to the form of the question. How much gas was in the car when you inspected it? Um, Objection, leading. Ask the answer. Um, overruled, the witness may answer. There was a, the gauge read E for empty. When you turned the key, what observations of A did you make? Objection, leading. Overruled. I want to show you what's been previously admitted, Exhibit 73. It'll show on the screen in front of you, and I'd ask that it be published as well. Objection, leading. What is depicted in that photograph? Objection, speculative. Um, overruled based on his training and experience, the witness may answer. That it appears to be an exhaust muffler and a couple chunks of wood and overturned dirt. The muffler that's observed in this picture, would that be um, consistent or inconsistent with um, a 2010 Ford Escape? Objection, speculative. Overruled, this witness may answer and provide an opinion. Go ahead. By just looking at a picture. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yeah, y'all think y'all You can cross-examine the witness about that, sir. Uh, Go I'm ahead. to. Y'all trying to pull a fast one. It is a vehicle muffler. Without seeing the ends of it and where the inlet, outlet are, and actual measurements, it would be impossible to see what vehicle it came from, but it did. it is an automotive muffler. Do you check to see if there are any recalls in a vehicle in coming to your conclusion? Objection, speculative, and do we still need this exhibit? Oh, thank you. We can take that down, and your objection's noted. It's overruled. The witness may answer. I do check for recalls, yes. Now, you talked about the brake system in terms of the, the brake pedal within the car, and it's, um, that it was operating correctly. Do you recall that testimony? Objection, leading. Overruled. It's foundational. Uh, the witness may answer. Yes, I do. How do the brake pads, where are they located and how do they relate to the pressing down of a brake pedal? Objection, leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. Are there any other components to the braking system um, in a car? Objection, leading. Overruled. There's a parking brake system in the vehicle. 
But other than that, so you've covered every aspect of the braking system in this particular vehicle, is that correct? Objection. Speculative. All rule the witness may answer. Yes, I have. Did you observe anything, anything at all, that would have prohibited this vehicle from stopping if the brake pedal had been applied? No. Is there anything that you observed or documented with it during or in your mechanical inspection report that would have contributed to this, the crash shiz that this car was involved in? Objection, I answer. Overruled, though, to witness my answer. No. Thank you. Any uh, cross examination? During your inspection, did you see any bully holes? Yes, I did. Do you recall where? Back up. Do you recall how many bully holes you observed? I do not recall a number of them. No, I knew there were more than one. The ones that you observed, do you recall where they were? I do believe one might have exited through either the windshield or rear window and one was in the side of the vehicle if I remember correctly. And did you find any shell cases? No, I did not. Uh, you made reference to the left rear tire being uh, being bigger than, than the other tires? Yes. Um, can you give a little bit more clarity on uh, how that would affect the vehicle? So one larger tire on the vehicle would obviously make the vehicle lean ever so slightly away from whichever side is larger than the other. Um, in this case, the amount of difference between the two tires, it's about an inch and a half in difference in radius. So in radius, you get half of that amount in height. So it would be about three quarters of an inch difference in height. That amount of difference is not noticeable in a vehicle. Um, the other thing, each vehicle acts differently with different size tires on it. There's no one size fits all. So different vehicles act differently it, to, uh, to having a, a bigger fitting tire. Yes. Uh, you made reference to it, uh, to, the, uh, to a vehicle leaning away from the side that's bigger? Or Correct. Would that in any way create a slight pull to the vehicle, to either side? In my experience, that small amount would not, no. I, I don't remember exactly what you said referring to the high beams. I guess you made reference to them being used at some point. The high beams were activated when I did my inspection, meaning that um, when the headlights are on, they were in high beam mode. The um, selector stick was pressed forward. Why would a vehicle use high beams? Usually a driver uses high beams to see better or to illuminate things better. So it, that would primarily refer to if it was nighttime? Correct. Would you say with your expertise it wouldn't make sense for a vehicle to use high beams in the daytime? There are limited uses for them in the daytime, yes. And what are some of the uses from, from your knowledge? The high beams shine brighter, so even with sunlight shining on them, um, other vehicles can see them. It's a thing that we use on the highway as law enforcement sometimes. It's just a little bit of a thing to help oncoming vehicles see. So, so it would essentially be for uh, identification purposes? For visibility is what I mean, so that it stands out to the other traffic. It doesn't look like it belongs because the lights look very bright. It gets the other driver's attention, the same as the red and blue lights on the top of it the cars. gets them to notice that law enforcement is present. Correct. That's what I meant by ID purpose, for them to be able to, to see the ball joint and tire rod. Is, is there a difference between the two? 
Yes, the ball joint is the, the joint itself, and it's on the end of the tie rod. Did you notice anything wrong with the tie rod, the actual tie rod, not the ball joint? No, there was nothing wrong with the tie rod. Um, I'm assuming you still have the exhibit 83? Yes, sir. It says, I noted a worn tie rod end on the left front wheel end. Was was that in reference to the ball joint and not the tie rod? Yes. They're, they're yeah. one and the same. The tie rod end is a ball joint. It's two different ways to refer to the same component. Okay, I was... Clarity. It's, it doesn't say ball joint right here. Would that be fair to say? Correct. And what is the the high mount brake lamp? The high mount brake lamp is on the back of the vehicle. You have the right brake light and turn signal, left brake light and turn signal, and then there's the third brake light that's a, like usually in the rear window or at the top of the back of the hatch of the vehicle. That's the high mount brake lamp. Okay. And it was inoperable when you inspected it? That's correct. Both of those were inoperable during inspection. So they didn't work? Correct. So it would be fair to say if someone was viewing the vehicle from behind, they would be able to see be because those were inoperable? Yes, at the time of inspection those lights did not work. And you also stated that it is unknown if they were working prior to the crash or damaged during the crash. Would that be fair to say? That's correct. That you would you would know either way? No, I would not have a way to tell when that light bulb went out. And high mount brake, high mount brake lamp were inoperable. Do you recall that? Yes. How about the left um, brake lamp? Was that operable or inoperable? Objection. Leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. The left stop lamp was working. Now, sir, just going back again to this ball joint, you stated that. I guess, was your testimony on cross-examination that <clears throat> unless the ball and socket is separated, you can still safely operate that vehicle? Objection. It mischaracterizes what was said. Well, based on the form of the question, I'll allow the witness to answer. Yes. Does the engine control acceleration? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled, the witness may answer. No, it requires driver input. Does the engine control braking? No, it does not. Does the engine control steering? Objection. What is the relevancy? Um, overrule. The witness may answer. No, it does not. Does the engine control gear shifting? Objection. Relevancy. Overrule. The witness may answer. It does not. Actually, coolant or some type of water. I wasn't sure if you're talking about the water pump or the radiator. Do you know what was leaking, if anything? Objection. Accent answered during the cross. Well, overrule the witness may answer. It's redirect. Um, yes, yeah, so water pump, water coolant, it's all interchangeable um, as far as the cooling system for the engine goes. And the coolant system was low at the time of inspection and had been leaking, but from where, I do not know. And again, does that control... The steering? No. The braking? No. The acceleration? No. Finally, sir, you had talked about on uh, cross-examination the presence of the high beams being on during the daylight. Do you recall that line of questioning? Yes. Specifically, you had indicated that sometimes the state patrol uses their high beams during the day. What was that for? Objection. That was answered. Overruled. The witness may answer. It's redirect. 
to increase visibility. Is that of any assistance if a vehicle is coming up behind people? Objection is speculative. Mr. training and experience, I will allow him to answer. No. Thank you. Nothing further. All right, thank you. You may step down. I will take that. Thank you, sir. And um, once the witness passes, I'll excuse the jury for an afternoon break. It's uh, just about 3.06. We'll take about 15 minutes. I'll rise for the jury. seated. Mr. Burks, I know the last thing you said, I heard you say that's hilarious. What were you referring to? I was referring to, like, are you serious? This, some of the same, some of the same things that I asked on, uh, when, when it's my time to question the witness can be overruled, but when the same thing is done, an object, it's, not, it's nothing, it's, it's, it's just thrown, it's just thrown to the side. I just, I just think that's funny. Well, I sir, really do. I don't find it funny. The objection to not having an exhibit sticker on your report is not, um, would not prevent the court from receiving the exhibit, and for my position, um, there's direct examination, there's cross-examination. The state or any witness, any party that calls a witness always has the opportunity to ask the direct exam questions and then redirect based upon what's asked during cross-examination. Sometimes that does mean there's some repetition, uh, but I didn't see anything through the redirect of this witness that I thought was in improper. Um, so I just wanted to make a record of that. I you, am going to caution you, sir. Do you understand um, what I was you saying? You are, but you, during multiple times during the questioning of that witness, you were mumbling under your breath. Um, you say disparaging remarks toward the court, toward the witness, or toward the process. So if it was disparaging, what did I say? Sir, you say things like it's not fair, or you go, you make noises that suggest like you're disgusted with the ruling that is made. So you're assuming what I mean by that, and when did Mr. I say Mr. Brooks, it I'm fair? just making a record because yeah, but it's you're, important you're making an that incorrect record. it's important that you demonstrate courtesy and decorum through these proceedings, and that you give respect to the witnesses who are testifying in the process. Um, did the you, witness feel disrespected? Did the witness he, say anything about feeling Mr. disrespected? Mr. Brooks, I'm not going to engage in this I don't think back he did. and forth with you because, first of all, it's a mischaracterization of my observations, number one. And yeah, number but your two, observations are job. incorrect. It's if, my if it, job to ensure that the under 906.11 that there's the effective presentation, uh, and I'll just refer you to that once again. I'll read it. Uh, into the record. You don't need to read it. Under 906.11, just make sure 11, that you make a correct The judge shall exercise record. reasonable control over the mode and order of interrogating witnesses and presenting evidence so as to do all of the time. following. Make the interrogation and presentation effective for the ascertainment of truth and when leading questions may be used to develop the witness's testimony. Um, so with that, we'll take our break. I'll start the 15 minutes. It's 3:13. We are in recess. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I did um, actually take note of um, when the court overruled one of um, Mr. Brooks' objections. His um, response was, "Stop trying right. to be slick." Yeah, I did say that. So, right. just for the record, I thought that that was very disrespectful. Thank you. I would agree. Yeah. Judge, can we discuss scheduling at some point as well, either now or on the return? Well, we come back. Why okay. wasn't that addressed uh, right when it happened? Honestly, Mr. Brooks, I'm really trying hard because not to that, highlight that's the, that's your the definition of trying to be slick during the trial. I'm trying my best here to I don't frankly see that. minimize pointing I don't see those it. things out to the jury and instead pointing them out 
outside the presence of the jury. You may have noticed I've even started to say I'd remind the jurors that the comments of the parties or the attorneys are not evidence so as to cast a broad brush and not simply highlight your conduct. I haven't noticed anything. And I, um, um, but all right, we're in recess. Thank you. What conduct you referring to? If you're not, if you're gonna be biased, then somebody. How late do we plan on going? I will go as late as six o'clock if need be. So I want to keep pushing along. I want to. Yeah, that's definitely pushing it here. That's not that late, sir. We've stayed till 5.36. I mean, Previously, there were times during jury selection we stayed till probably 7 or 7.30. On um, the position, last two nights, we did break at about 4.30, 4, 4.45. And so um, I'm willing to go a little bit later tonight. So it's 3.30 now. Was, we'll see how things go. That, I was making that for the saying that on the record because in my position, that is kind of late. Well, let's start now and we'll get going and maybe we don't have to go that late. So bring the jury out. Are we going to address subject matter jurisdiction? The written decision that I previously entered is what I will stand on. I'm not going to address it any is that, further. Is that verified proof? Sir, my written decision is the decision on is subject it, matter jurisdiction. Is it verified proof? Because it hasn't been proven on the record, and that was not verified proof. It has yet I to am be proven. De denying the request by the defendant to verify subject matter jurisdiction. It has That's denied. Proven for the record. I disagree with you as a matter of law. The show jury's me, coming show out. Me lawful law. All right, for the jury. Show me by lawful law. Unless you make an attack of agreement that you don't have to prove subject matter jurisdiction on the record by law. It should be All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Is there a set procedure you follow when you are asked to respond to a crime scene? Yes. What is that, please? Judge if, leading. <coughs> if law enforcement is at the scene and would like the crime lab crime scene response team to respond, they simply call the lab that's in their jurisdiction and basically the call will get routed to me and I'll dispatch a team to the scene. And on November 21 of 2021, was the crime scene response unit asked to respond to an incident in the city of Waukesha, county of Waukesha, state of Wisconsin? Yes. The nature of the call was to respond to an address on Maple Street to begin processing a vehicle that was abandoned in the driveway of that residence. Were you given any limited information as to the significance of the vehicle? Yes, it was reported to me that the vehicle was most, more than likely involved in uh, running through the Waukesha Christmas Parade. Were you uh, aware that it was reported pedestrians had been struck during the uh, event? Yes, that was reported. Um, the objection is noted. I'll, I'll allow it as it is foundational. The witness may answer. Yes. Now, when I think of a crime scene, I typically think of a place or a location. Does your unit also uh, cover processing of a vehicle like this? Yes. In this Overruled, you may answer. <laughs> in this particular circumstance or situation, the vehicle itself can be considered a crime scene in and of itself. And in your um, years with the crime lab, do you have prior experience processing motor vehicles that were suspected to have been involved in fatal collisions with pedestrians? Objection. Leading. Overruled. Foundational. The witness may answer. Yes, I've processed several vehicles related to that. So first on the screen is Exhibit 67, which I believe was previously admitted? Yes. 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 All right. Objection. Prior to the uh, photographing of the vehicle, is it been moved or altered by you in any way, sir? No. Objection. Leading. Overruled. Foundational. The witness may answer. No. Please uh, put up for the witness number 68, which has been previously admitted. Go ahead. Objection. Overruled. Please describe. This is a overall photograph of the back end of the red Ford escape. Do you believe these five photographs are true and accurate depictions of the way the vehicle looked 
on the driveway at 338 Maple that evening, sir. Objection meeting. I'm sorry, I was trying to get a hold of my witness list. Could you re-ask the question? Yes, Your Honor. Do these five photographs truly and accurately depict the way the vehicle looked at 338 Maple Street on the evening of November 21, 21? Objection leading. Overruled foundational. The witness may answer. Yes. Move to admit 67. Well, 67 and 68 are already in. So move to admit 93, 102, 103, and permission to publish all five. Objection. Relevancy. Noted. Overruled. The exhibits are received. Permission to publish granted. 67, you testified, was an overview photograph? Yeah, it's an overall photograph of the... Um, overruled, they're now being shown to the jury. It's proper. It's foundational as well. Go ahead. Yes, this is an overall photograph showing the location uh, of the vehicle, but specifically also showing the front end damage of the vehicle. All right. Next, 93. Please describe. Uh, a close-up. <coughs> overruled. Go ahead. A close-up of the damage that has been sustained on the front uh, hood area, bumper area of the Red Ford Escape. Next is 68. Objection. Overruled. There appears to be some liquid substance on the ground. Do you see that, sir? Yes, Objection I do. Leading. Um, overruled foundational. The witness may answer. Do you remember seeing that substance that night? Yes. Were you able to tell what it was? Objection, specifically to you. Overruled, based upon his training and experience, he may answer. Not specifically what type of fluid it is, but some kind of engine compartment fluid. From this vehicle? Yes. Okay. Number 102, please. Also showing <laughs> what I describe as a white headband, headband on the broken driver door mirror. Is that illuminated in some fashion? Objection yes. leading. Overruled. How was it illuminated? Objection leading. Overruled. It has white LEDs that are within the cloth and they're blinking on and off. Okay. And then last would be 103. Objection. Please describe. Oh, I'm sorry. He objected. Um, overruled. My processing strategy this particular night was to collect anything that would be fragile in nature off of the vehicle and then get it transported to a more environmentally friendly uh, secured facility to continue processing in the subsequent days. Was that for your comfort or for some uh, scientific reason? Objection. Speculative. Overruled. So what items, if you uh, recall, did you remove that you had deemed fragile? Objection, Lee. Overruled. Uh, of particular interest on the vehicle was the headband um, that was around the <laughs> driver door mirror that was broken. So that item was removed? Correct. Uh, what about the front bumper? We saw that laying on the, on the uh, driveway. Was that secured in some fashion? Objection, yeah. Lee. <coughs> yes, to make transport easy, the bumper would have had to be lifted up with bungee cords and resecured. I'm going to uh, present to the witness only another series of photographs, starting with 105. Go ahead. Do you know how many? Eight. Sequential? Uh, Yes, 105 through 112. Thank you. Objection. Let me see. Well, I haven't seen them yet, so I'll have to wait, but you can put them up and then I'll make a ruling. I think we're ready on our end. We're just waiting for Madam Clark. Oh, yeah. oh sorry. <laughs> I'll leave them alone. You hit it. We've just mixed each other twice. Five, 105. All right. Um, there. Given what I see on the screen, the objection is overruled. I'm just going to ask the witness to look through these photos just as if he had them in front of him 
and then I'll um, ask some foundational questions. Do you need more time to review that photo? Jake's no. leading. Overruled. Jake Shane. <coughs> Noted. Exhibits 105. <coughs> 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, 111, and 112 are all received permission to publish granted. So in this photograph, sir, is the, uh, what's the condition of the front bumper, please? The Overruled foundational, the witness may answer. The front bumper is secured in somewhat, should be its original position with those bungee cords that we previously talked about. Next 106, please. Was there an effort by you to try and match the pieces of the bumper to the frame of the body, or is that just the way it came together? Objection. Speak with you. Go ahead, you may answer. At this time, I was not trying to physically match anything together. It was just for the purpose of securing it for transport. What is the... Uh, position of the driver's side window in this photograph, sir? The window is down. Is that the way you found it? Yes. Objection. Okay. Overrule. The witness may answer. 107, please. Please describe. An overall photograph from the point view of the front passenger side of the vehicle. Next, 108. Objection. Overruled. Is that the way you found it? Yes. Okay. 109. Along the, the front passenger door and the rear passenger door, do you see anything remarkable? Objection. Leading. Overruled. Uh, spanning the length of both doors is uh, quite a significant scratch. Have you seen scratches like that before in processing motor vehicles, sir? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. I have. What is that consistent with, please? Objection. Leading. Overruled. Coming into contact with another item. Thank you. Uh, number 110. Please describe. An overall overall photograph showing the rear of the passenger side of the vehicle. 111. <coughs> Objection. Overruled. And then 112, please. Objection. Overruled. It looks like there's a substance on the exterior of the vehicle on the driver's side. Do you see what I'm referring to, sir? Objection. Leading. Um, overruled. Do you know what that item or substance was? Objection. Speculate to you. Overruled, based upon his training and experience and his personal observation of the vehicle, he may answer. And was it um, <clears throat> sprayed along the most of the driver's side of the vehicle? Objection, speculative. Overruled. Yes. Okay. Move to admit 117, permission to publish, Your Honor. Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. Objection. Overruled. Go ahead. Do you recognize the object in Exhibit 118? I do. Do you believe this photo is a true and accurate representation of the object as you uh, found it on the vehicle? I do. Overruled. Um, your answer may stand. This is a close-up photograph of the clothing items that were pinned to the windshield <coughs> by the crumpled hood and it was being held in place by that hood being pinning the items against the windshield as well as that wiper arm. Okay. What did you find them to be? It was a detachable hood from a jacket as well as a winter hat. And can you just point out on the touch screen which is which? Objection leading. Overruled. That's the hood portion and that's the, the hat portion. Okay, thank you. Did you find any U.S. mail or paperwork inside the vehicle? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, I did. Were there any names associated with the U.S. mail or paperwork inside the vehicle? Objection. Relevancy. <coughs> Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes. What was that name? 
Daryl E. Brooks Jr. Was there an address, if you can recall? Objection, Brother AC. Overruled, the witness may answer. There was, but I can't, I don't exactly recall it. Sure. Also on the table next to you, sir, is your report that I've marked as exhibit number 90. Do you see that? Yes. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. <coughs> Placed on the table. Go ahead, attorney Opper. Well, objection. How did it get on the table? Um, your objections noted. It's overruled. Um, <coughs> the record will reflect that um, there's a copy of a crime lab report. It has an exhibit sticker, number 90, with the case number of this case. Um, handing it back to the witness. Go ahead and make questions. How did it get it. on the table? Who put, placed it on the table? That's, Attorney that's Opera objection. indicated she placed it there. When did that happen? Attorney Opera, go ahead and continue. Did you author this report, sir? Yes, I did. If you uh, review the report, would you be able to see the address for uh, Daryl Brooks that was noted in the paperwork from the inside of the SUV? Objection. I, I don't consent to being called that name. Please do. Overruled. Yes, I would. Please do that, sir. Objection. Overruled. Grounds for the overrule. The witness may answer. Grounds for the overrule. Go ahead, sir. The address for the pieces of mail that I recovered was 4014 North 19th Street, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53209. <coughs> Thank you. Objection. That should be strike. He, when he asked the question, he said he didn't recall. So how can you force somebody to recall? Oh. The witnesses recollection was refreshed through the use of his report which he indicated he documented the address your objections noted it's overruled the answer will stand go ahead next question please yes and actually if i could back up one minute and ask miss gussie to put back up 117 you have to ask a question about 117. go ahead and if we could display well, it please it madam clerk <coughs> Got answer, no Mr. Yeah. Brooks, please refrain from interrupting. You'll have an opportunity yeah. to ask I, your I questions on cross. I have an objection of how, evident, how stuff got to the table without my knowledge. That that should be known. That should at least be noted for the record. It was. I noted wouldn't be. For I wouldn't be able to do that. Um, your objections noted. It's overruled. Go ahead, Attorney Opper. Mm -hmm. So that needs to stop in, happening. In it addition to, to that, all right. I'm going to excuse the jury. All right, the jury. Can't keep doing stuff with, without. It should be a fair trial. That's my right. I shouldn't be able to do things without my knowledge. And then pass it off to the jury like that's fair. They deserve to know that too. The rest of you can have a seat as well. As soon as the jury's out, I'll make a record. All right, Mr. Brooks, you are well aware. That the reason I don't consent documents to being called that are name. being put on the I don't consent to being called that name. Are because this court indicated it would limit the movement of the parties due to your custodial status to keep things fair. And I you merely asked, how did it get there? Sir, do not I'm interrupt not me, or I'm you will I'm forfeit your rights to know be how present it got there? in this courtroom. So you holding me in contempt? Me. Are you holding me in contempt? I'm going to make a record. Are you holding me in contempt? I'm not answering your questions. So then you're not holding me in contempt. Do not interrupt me again or you will go to the other courtroom. Under what lawful law? All right, he's interrupted me once again. Um, we're gonna clear the courtroom. He's being disrespectful. I'll make a record once he moves. Unless you can promise me right now that you let me make my record without you interrupting me, sir. You gonna make your record? You can make your record. Then please don't interrupt me. Don't hold me in contempt. I've never said any such thing. Removing me for the courtroom, Your Honor, is essentially holding me in contempt. All right. No, you're forfeiting your right to be present under Illinois versus Allen. I didn't, I didn't forfeit anything. I will, I'm going to start talking, and if he interrupts, then I will close this courtroom, and he will be taken to the next courtroom. Mr. Brooks, you are well aware that the court made some pretrial uh, rulings related to 
whether there would be, they can stay in, I haven't closed it yet, he's not interrupting me, whether the parties could approach the witness stand. And I did that because you're in custody and I'm not gonna allow you to approach the witness stand while in custody. Um, that is why uh, various precautions have taken place uh, to limit, frankly, that from happening. Um, throughout this trial, um, there was one instance at the very beginning of the case where I allowed the state to approach a witness. I corrected that. That hasn't happened since. We've had bailiffs take <coughs> items up to the witness stand or the items have been given to the witnesses or they've been placed on the witness stand. That's proper. There is nothing uh, wrong about that. Nobody's trying to pull a fast one over you. No one is doing something that's not permitted uh, by this court or frankly under the rules of decorum and courtesy or the presentation of evidence in this case. Frankly, from my perspective, sir, your attempts and your comments are to try to dig in at this jury and to somehow create doubt about the presentation of this case or the fairness of these proceedings uh, without the party, meaning the state, having an opportunity to refute, explain, or correct it. I've taken the jury out at this point to admonish you that any further mumbling under your breath um, or not recognizing when I uphold or sustain an objection that I will take as a disrupting interruption meant to disrupt the proceedings. I'm not holding you in contempt. I'm well aware that that's one of my options. I choose not to do it for the reasons that I've stated on the record previously. All right, you can forfeit your right to be present at any point in time during this trial by your conduct under Illinois versus Allen. When it is disruptive, when it uh, does not follow the simple rules of courtesy and decorum, I draw your attention once again to SCR chapter 62, um, which has been previously provided to you, which is under the statute there. Um, these constant mumbling and interruptions for the during the proceedings. I haven't made a record of them today, but I will now. Started at 9.01, then there was five at 9.02, three at 9.03, four at 9.04, one at 9.05, sorry, two at 9.05, one at 9.06, uh, three at 9.08, again at 9.17, 9.27, 10.31, 1.05, there was talking over by you at 2.03, five interruptions at 2.14, 2.15, 2.17, at 2.19, um, audible muttering, 2.31, 2.33, what I would describe as inappropriate, like muttering under your breath, 2.35, at 3.06, there was a hilarious comment, at 3.11, there was what I would describe as arguing about the muttering and the irony of it all, at 3.12, there were four interruptions, at 3.37, um, more 409, 410, more mumbling at 411, twice, and at 412, um, nine very, uh, different times. So I think I've made an ample record of the disruptions today. I've been abundantly patient with you. Um, I've, again, as I stated earlier, I've even limited how I tell these things to the jury about how to disregard, and I simply say the jury is to disregard comments and statements made by the parties or the lawyers as those are not evidence. So I'm warning you, do not interrupt again when if this jury comes back or when they come back and you do that, uh, then uh, you will be removed and you will forfeit your right to be present for the examination of this witness. Let's bring the jury back in. Well, well you might as well remove me then because you, what you're doing is, is, is not fair. I can't even rebut what you're saying. I didn't interrupt you. I let you make your incorrect record. Mr. Brooks, I'm bringing the jury out and we're continuing. We're going to get through these witnesses. It, okay. And I'm not stopping you through from doing that. Through your behavior, you're not going to delay these you, proceedings it, today. I'm not trying to delay continue. the proceedings. So I wish you would stop being incorrect on the record and saying what I'm trying to do if you don't know that. You don't Mr. know Brooks, what I'm, I'm trying to do. I'm bringing the jury out. I'm not going to argue with you. Then, so. then don't. Because I'm not arguing with you either. I'm stating facts. You're raising your voice. It's because very Because I'm, I'm, I'm tired of you always making a record. At me. You're making a record of me trying to look bad. I know what you're trying to do. It's not going to work. I'm making a record of what's accurately You're making a record of incorrect statements. That's what you're doing. 
you're not making a record of Mr. not Bruce, being I'm able. I'm advising you to be quiet because the jury's coming back out. You're advising me to be quiet? Is you telling me to be quiet? I'm advising you to be respectful when the jury Are you comes telling out. me to be quiet or are you asking me? I'm asking you and advising okay. you. Okay, thank you for correcting that because don't nobody tell me what to do. I don't tell nobody else what to do. I'd appreciate we're all you. In, we're all the adults in here. I've never told you to sir. do anything at all. Sir, I'd appreciate if your tone of voice would change. I, I would appreciate if you would ask me. I'm a grown man with grown kids. Don't nobody ain't nobody gonna talk to me like that. Nobody. I don't have a problem with doing what you ask me to do, not tell me. Just like when I ask you about subject matter jurisdiction that you have yet to prove on the record, but somehow I'm being intentionally disruptive. Of, uh, come on, man, stop! Just stop it. Jury's coming out. All right for the jury. Not going to work. I'm supposed to be scared of getting removed or something. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Statement continue its examination of this witness. I believe we're on exhibit 117. Yes, we have 117. If Madam Clerk, would you please turn the display back on? <coughs> Mr. Johnson, were there other items on the front passenger seat besides the blue winter hat? Objection leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. I do recall a cell phone being present on that front passenger seat. I also see uh, some items that look like maybe headphones or a charging cable, something like that. Do you see that, Objection sir? leading. Overruled. Foundational. The witness may answer. The exhibits previously been received. <coughs> Objection speculative. Overruled. I do see that. And how about on the floorboard of the front passenger seat? Is there an item there, sir? Objection leading. Overruled. You may answer. Yes. What do you remember that item was? A TV. Okay. Now if we could please go to Exhibit 116 and put up for the witness only. Sir, do you see Exhibit 116 in front of you? I do. Move to admit <coughs> 116, permission to publish. Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. Exhibit one seven excuse me, exhibit one sixteen is received, permission to publish is granted. This is an overview of the rear passenger seat. Um, that rear passenger compartment contained several clothing items and miscellaneous items. Okay. Was the um, condition of the back seat like this when you found the vehicle, sir? Objection speculative. Overruled the witness <coughs> the answer based upon his knowledge of recovering the vehicle from the scene and his training and experience. Yes. I'm going to please ask uh, Ms. Gussie to put up 113, 114, and 115 for his review. Go ahead. Is 113 up? Yes. Okay. Do you recognize that item? I do. Okay. I'll move to admit 113, 114, and 115 permission to publish. Are you able to tell the path of travel for the bullet? Yes. yes. Speculative. Please. Describe. Overruled. You may answer. Yes. The, the fire bullet that caused this defect most likely was came through that rear passenger window that was shattered and entered the vehicle and then exited the vehicle through the windshield. Number 114, please. That's an apparent fired bullet defect. I call this a striking defect. That's on the roof rail of the passenger side of the vehicle. Okay. Why do you call it a striking defect? It didn't penetrate any part of the vehicle. It was a more of a glancing kind of ricochet. Okay. And then uh, number 115. And if you could zoom in on that uh, back left. Yep. Yeah, thank you. 
<coughs> Please describe. This is a, a, an apparent fire bullet defect. I call this a perforating defect because it actually went through the exterior door skin and went all the way through into the inside of the vehicle. What kinds of things are you looking for on the undercarriage? Looking for anything that shouldn't be normally present on the undercarriage of the vehicle. So I was looking for any hairs, fibers, any potential biological fluids such as blood. Did you find any such objects? Ejection leading. Overrule. He may answer. Yes, I did. Did you collect those items? Yes, I did. You had described for us earlier um, swabbing of the steering wheel on the interior of the vehicle. Do you recall that? Objection. Leading. Um, overruled. The witness may answer. How do you go about swabbing a steering wheel, sir? Objection. What's the relevancy? Overruled. The witness may answer. The best way to collect DNA evidence from a surface is to use a two swab technique. In this particular case, those items Anything for DNA is going to be transferred to, to the DNA analysis unit. Did that happen? Yes, that did. And how about the uh, hat, States Exhibit 87? Uh, did that get transferred to another unit for further analysis, to your knowledge? Yes, so any clothing item that's Hold on. There was an objection. <coughs> Grounds? Relevancy. Overruled. The witness may continue answering. Clothing items that are worn by individuals are a really good source of transfer of DNA. So yes, I collected that hat and it was transferred to the DNA analysis unit. Your report exhibit 90. Did you believe that to be a, a true and accurate narration or summary, I should say, of your work in this case, sir? Yes, I do. Move to admit number 90, Your Honor. Objection. Rather busy. Overruled. Exhibit 90 is received. I don't have any other questions then, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Cross exam, please. You said you do DNA uh, analysis, correct? No, I, I did DNA analysis for nearly 10 years, I don't actually do DNA analysis anymore. So at the time of the incident, were you doing DNA analysis? No. So who did the DNA analysis on all the items that were found during your investigation? DNA analyst Trevor Nailed. Did you see the, the results of those DNA analysis? Did you see the results of those DNA tests? We did have conversations. Did you see them? No. So it'd be fair to say you don't know what those results were? I didn't verify it. Like I said, we just had conversations. So do you know the results of the DNA analysis? In particular, is there a particular item? For any of the items. I don't recall the exact results, no. And you made reference to the, uh, the gunshot that, that you stated stayed in the rear cargo. Uh, where in the rear cargo did you find that shell casing? Objection, that's a misstatement. It wasn't a shell casing, Your Honor. Shell casing, fragment, same thing. Hold on, there's been an objection. I'll sustain the objection. It mischaracterizes the testimony and ask that you rephrase it. Did you find a shell casing, a bullet fragment? I found a fire bullet fragment. Where did you find the fire bullet fragment? It was really close proximity to where the rear latch comes down and hooks in to stay closed. So on the floor of the rear cargo by where the actual cargo door comes down. And you said a latch that comes down? Yeah, so how doors latch, 
like car doors latch, you know where the latch is? So where the rear cargo door came down and latched, it was in really close proximity on the horizontal surface of that rear cargo area. Did you observe uh, if, if the bullet fragment had struck anything? It struck some items in that rear cargo area. Do you recall what, what it struck? I don't. You made reference to a headband being on the, uh, the rear view driver's side mirror, correct? Correct, it was on the driver's door mirror. And from your expertise, how would you, in your opinion, guess that it got there? By coming into contact with something or someone that was wearing it. And do you know that for sure? No, but based off of my experience of a lot of years of examination of physical items of evidence. But it'd be fair to say that you don't know exactly. No, I wasn't at the parade. I wasn't. No. When towing the vehicle, what was it placed on? Because of the amount of traffic or cars that were parked on the road, we couldn't, the towing company couldn't get the enclosed trailer right to the end of the driveway. So the vehicle was put onto a flatbed truck and then driven a few houses down where then it was transferred to an enclosed trailer and then removed from the scene. So with the bumper, being that it was first placed on a flatbed truck, as you say, at that time, what the bumper had, what 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 problem with the bumper had caused if it wasn't going to be physically dragged or or anything at that point? I'm not sure I understand your question. What what kind of problem with the bumper pose if the vehicle was on a on a flatbed truck? The whole point. Essentially, is essentially, what I'm saying is to give you more clarity. How could the bumper be dragged at that point? It was being removed from the surface of the driveway onto the flatbed. So if the bumper weren't secured in an upright position, it would be pulled and the bumper, as the vehicle is going this way, the bumper would be pulled underneath the vehicle. So once it was secured on the flatbed truck, would the bumper still pose any problem? The, the vehicle on the flatbed the bumper was in a secure position. If it wasn't bungee corded, would it have posed a problem? Yes. How so if it wasn't moving? The whole purpose was to secure the bumper in place to preserve any physical evidence that might have been on the bumper. And you, do you recall who did the actual towing? The company is complete towing and recovery. And you stated to want to get the vehicle to a envir environmentally friendly, secure location? Yeah, a better term would be environmentally controlled. Uh, what, what do you mean by environmentally controlled? Proper lighting uh, outside of the elements, outside of view of the public, so an enclosed building. Why the reference to outside of the public? It's easier to do examinations in a controlled environment. Would it be fair to say at that time, before it was towed, the, the, the vehicle had been uh, secured, uh, checked, that was done, that was done out in public, so what would be the difference at that point? That night, I was concerned with doing the necessary steps that I deemed relevant to collect and then get that vehicle to a more suitable environment just based off of how much more work and analysis and processing that vehicle would entail. <coughs> fundamentally, I follow, uh, I follow what you're saying fundamentally. 
the question though is by the time you arrived to the scene where the vehicle was located were you aware that the vehicle had essentially been already investigated no so you had no knowledge that the vehicle had been secured had been um, pretty much investigated by that point well I was aware that the vehicle was in a secured state I don't know what happened prior to that it was very little information that I received on the initial phone call because of the hectic nature of everything so I had an address and I knew that the vehicle was being secured by law enforcement so law enforcement were present when you arrived to the scene yes and at that time you had learned no uh, did you learn any knowledge from the law enforcement other than what you were told during the phone call? No. Do you recall who you were called by? I was called by Special Agent in Charge Dave Clabundy of the Division of Criminal Investigations. <laughs> Do you recall what time you arrived at the scene? I arrived at approximately 8.15 p.m. Do you recall what time the vehicle was found? I don't recall. Do you recall anyone telling you or mention, mentioning what time the vehicle had been found? I don't recall. So it would be fair to say before you arrived on the scene, you have no knowledge of what's been happening around the vehicle. That's correct. You say you, you made reference to a hat being found in the background. Do you, do you remember saying that? Or in the backyard, rather, I'm sorry. Not the background, the backyard, I meant to say. Yes. And At the time that you observed this hat in the backyard, do you, from your expert opinion, do you recall it having any relevance to the vehicle? No, it was um, an item of evidence or an I a potential item of evidence that just seemed out of place. So in that, those types of situations, I always collect those types of items. But you weren't sure at the time if it had any involvement with the actual vehicle? No. Was there anything significant that stood out about the hat? Just the location. Did you find any blood on the hat? Did you find... Or is it just pretty much just a hat in the backyard? I didn't do a thorough, thorough examination of the hat. So as far as you you were concerned, you, you, it was basically just taking in the evidence as a precautionary thing? or Yeah, it was an item that just seemed out of place, so I collected that hat. All the uh, photographs that you were shown, had you seen those photographs before today? Yes. Do you recall if they were taken the same night of your investigation or multiple? nights or days rather there were multiple days and do you recall why you had to or do you recall why those photos had to be taken over a multiple day span yes the vehicle needed a comprehensive mm -hmm. evaluation or processing examination of pretty much every single side and surface of that vehicle and to do that uh, photograph wise would have took days yes <clears throat> do you recall how long you, uh, your complete investigation took mine along with my colleagues yours mine the examination itself of just me examining the vehicle just you probably over 40 hours and that does not include the report that I'm writing it doesn't include the process of going through the report everything but my examination at least 40. 
And so I'm assuming you did the report after you completed the initial investigation. Part. Yes, the report's a summary of my processing. And define summary. What do you mean by summary? It pulls everything together. It details my examinations and any findings I have from those examinations. I always view summary as not every detail, but pretty much like uh, it's, it's, it's much as would be relevant, but not every single detail. Would that be fair to say? This report is comprehensive in the terms of it lists every single item that was collected. So why would you refer to it as a summary? It's a summary of the examination and processing. That's the best way to describe it. It's not a dictation, in other words. What do you mean by there, dictation? There are other reports that other agencies may do that are dictated, right? They're this, I did this, then I did this, then I did this. This is a summary. This isn't a dictated report. So what exactly did you summarize in your report? My examination and processing strategies that I used and the items of evidence collected and any relevant findings associated with those <coughs> examinations. Do you recall obtaining a search warrant to conduct an inspection on the uh, ACM? I'm no. sorry, I didn't understand. An inspection of what? Uh, the the ACM, I guess that would be the air, air control module, I'm guessing that's what that's Thank you. Re referencing. No, since I don't do that type of analysis or examination, I didn't obtain any search warrant with that. Any reason why I would say that in the paperwork? Objection vague. Grounds. Sustained as to the form of the question. <clears throat> as to what paper your paperwork you're referring to. Uh I'm guessing I don't know what the what it will be called, but it says conclusion inspection summary. <coughs> And, and the conclusion inspection, inspection or conclusion slash inspection summary. Do you recall? Is it from this witness? Huh? Is it from this witness? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't think that is from this witness, John. I don't see anything like that in this Exhibit 90. Are you perhaps still looking at Inspector Schultz's report from the State Patrol, the last witness? Uh, what page number do you have? And I'll take a look at it and I'll compare. This says uh, page five. Yeah, he's looking at uh, the last exhibit from Inspector Schultz, 83. Well, it says Chief Christopher Johnson. Oh, it does say that in 83. It says, if I can read for completeness, or you can, it says, Upon arrival, I met with crime scene chief Christopher Johnson from the Wisconsin State Crime Lab. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm reading from. Okay. Chief Johnson had obtained a search warrant to conduct the mechanical inspection and to image the data retained within the escape's airbag control module ACM. Yes. Correct? Yes. Okay. So that was written by Inspector Schultz, who just testified, not this witness. To clarify the record here. Thank you. Yes. Had you uh, received any follow up from law enforcement at, after you had completed everything? No. Had you yourself uh, followed up with law enforcement ab about the investigation after you completed your initial part? No. You yourself didn't file any claims in this matter, did you? 
No. Do you know of anyone who filed any claims in this matter? I don't. And do you recall who you were subpoenaed by to testify? I was subpoenaed by District Attorney Sue Opper. Have you at any time seen or read any complaints in, in regards to this incident? No. Do you know who the plaintiff is in this matter? The state of Wisconsin. <laughs> Would you label that as a person, an actual human? Grounds. Sustained. Not relevant. You ever actually seen the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Sustained. If you saw the plaintiff, would you be able to identify the plaintiff? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Sustained. Pursuant to 9611, <coughs> sir, please move on to a different line of questioning. Just trying to establish who the plaintiff is, Your Honor. Do you see the plaintiff present in court today? Objection, Grounds. irrelevant. Sustained. Would you consider yourself to be an injured party in this matter? No. No further questions. Thank you. Any redirect? Uh, just very briefly. Uh, Mr. Johnson, you said when you arrived on Maple Street there were police officers present? That's correct. And you said the vehicle was secure at that point? Correct. Objection. What do you mean? Leading. Um, the answer may stand. Next question. Overall. What do you mean by that, sir? The perimeter was secured with crime scene tape, and there were officers that were standing at the location where the vehicle was. Was it, would it have been possible for a member of the public or any curious person to just walk up and touch the vehicle or do anything to the vehicle? Objection. Speculative. Uh, based upon his training and experience, he may answer. Overall. <coughs> they would have been stopped by law enforcement. Thank you. That's all I have. All right. Thank you, sir. You may step down. <coughs> Put that back. Thank you. Um, Objection to that. That um, no, they before didn't. you should before you showed me that I didn't even see what that was. If you would have never told, you again. I know, but if you never would have told me, I never would have even know what that was, because I didn't see it until you just moved it. Um, the witness had it up on the stand, but here it is. It's exhibit marked as exhibit eighty-seven. Go ahead and say, state has moved it into evidence. I believe there's an objection. It's yes, noted. there is an objection. Um, overruled based upon the testimony of the prior witness. It is received. And who do we have coming up to the stand? Your Honor, the state next calls Trevor Nalid. And for the record, he was handed a copy of Exhibit 91 on his way to the witness stand. About how many DNA samples have you processed? Over Objection. Overruled. The witness may answer. I'm sorry, will you repeat your answer? Over 2,000. Have you previously testified in court before? Objection relevancy. Um, overruled, the witness may answer. Where is DNA found in the human body? Objection leading. Overruled, foundational, the witness may answer. DNA is found in the nucleus of a cell. And is that important in your analysis? Objection leading. Overruled, foundational, you may answer. Yes, it is. Why? Objection um, leading. Overruled, go ahead. It's important because we can take samples, evidentiary samples that may be from blood or saliva and compare them with uh, known standards which are typically buccal swabs which are uh, swabs from the inside of the cheek or dried blood standards. Are you familiar with uh, something known as STR analysis? Objection leading. Overruled, foundational, the witness may answer. Yes I am. What is STR analysis, please? A short tandem repeat analysis. Um, 
over 99% of DNA is the same from person to person. So we're looking at that 1% that varies from individual to individual. Um, we can type standards from anybody associated with the case and make comparisons from the evidentiary profile to the standards to either include or exclude <coughs> individuals. All right. Um, I'd like to direct your attention to Exhibit 91. Do you have that item in front of you, sir? Yes, I do. What is 91, please? Uh, 91 is my confidential report of laboratory findings dated April 29th, 2022. And uh, do you know um, if it relates to events occurring in the city of Waukesha <coughs> on November 21 of 21? Objection leading. We're ruled foundational, the witness may answer. Yes, it does. Okay. Were you given DNA standards to compare any profiles that you may develop uh, what, from the evidence to known individuals in the case? Yes, I was. Do you remember who you got standards from? I do. Are you able to name them? Or if you need to refer to your report, you may, but just let us know. Okay. Uh, can I read off the report? You may read off your report. What page are you reading from, sir? I will be reading <coughs> page two. Okay. Go ahead. Objection. Overruled. The witness may do so. I received buckle swabs, so cheek swabs, from Erica Patterson as well as Darrell Brooks. I received dried blood standards from Wilhelm Hospital, Tamara Durand, Jane Kulik, Leanna Owen, Virginia Sorensen, and Jackson Sparks. Is there a difference between those two, uh, the method in which they were submitted, the buckle swab versus the dried blood standard? Objection leading. Um, overruled, foundational, the witness may answer. Yes. All right. Now you process many items related to this case. Is that correct, sir? Objection leading. <coughs> overruled, foundational, the witness may answer. Yes, I did. Analysis you were able to perform on some <coughs> swabs from the steering wheel of the vehicle in question. Is that correct, sir? That's correct. And uh, the swabs were obtained by another member of the crime lab, is that right? Objection, speculative. Um, overruled, the witness may answer. That's correct. In this case, uh, we were able to say that it was a two-person mixture. Were you able to identify who those two people would be? Um, Objection, speculative. Overruled, the witness may answer based upon training, experience, and investigation and analysis in this case. Uh, yes. How did you do that, sir? Uh, I ran it through this program called StarMix. Is that a computer program? Yes, it is. What is that, please? Objection, leading. Overruled. How does it work? Objection, uh, leading. Overruled. Is that used in other labs around the country, sir? Objection, speculative. I don't know it's used around the country. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, it is. Is it uh, a, a reliable method of performing DNA analysis, in your opinion, sir? Yes, it is. Has it been accepted in uh, courts and other cases? Objection, speculative. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, it has. More than once? Objection, leading. Overruled, you may answer. Yes. Do you know about how many times Star Mix has been used in Wisconsin courts? Objection, speculative. Overruled, the witness may answer. Since we brought it online in January of 2020, it's been accepted over 100 times in the state of Wisconsin. Do you use Star Mix to analyze uh, the DNA profile, this two person mixture from the steering wheel of the Ford Escape? Objection, leading. Overruled, foundational, the witness may answer. Yes, I did. What conclusion did you draw? Um, based on it being a two-person mixture, uh, Erica Patterson and Darrell Brooks are both very strong support for inclusion. They're both greater, or it's at least one quadrillion times more likely to observe the DNA profile if it's a mixture resulting from um, them plus an unknown uh, over two unknowns. So the odds of it being Mr. Brooks DNA versus some other random person in the world are very 
very rare, correct? Objection leading, and I don't consent to being called that name. Received swabs from the gear shift of the red SUV. I ran that through Starmax as well. And what conclusion did you reach? Objection leading. Overrule. The witness may answer. The same as the steering wheel. So Erica Patterson and Darrell Brooks are both very strong support for inclusion. Meaning that their DNA is on that gear shift. Objection leading. Excuse me. It's at least one quadrillion times more likely to observe the DNA profile if it's a mixture from H1, meaning the person of interest, and two unknowns versus three unknowns. The person of interest being Daryl Brooks? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name and just leading the witness. Um, overruled. So in this case, both Erica and Darrell are greater than um, one times 10 to the 15th, which is our one quadrillion. And the last item you said was a stain on the right cuff of the sweatshirt? Correct. Did you reach any uh, ultimate conclusion as it relates to that item? That was a two-person mixture with at least one male contributor. And what was your conclusion? Um, both Erica Patterson and Darrell Brooks are very strong support for inclusion. And you said that substance did was a, a presumptive positive for blood? Correct. Objection leading. Um, overrule. The witness may answer. That's correct. These, uh, these DNA analysis with uh, star mix, uh, I'm a little curious to get clarification on uh, what does it mean uh, when you say mixture? What exactly does that mean? <coughs> a mixture just means that it is more than one person present in the profile. So by by it being more than one person present in the profile, would it be fair to say that that would constitute it being more than one person? Yes. The gear shift had a, a three person mixture. So would that would that apply to the gear shift? The same that it would likelihood that it's three different people's DNA on the gear shift? That's correct. And for, and for the steering wheel, a two-person mixture. So that would be two people for DNA for the steering wheel? Correct. Do you recall when you did this uh, DNA analyst? Analyzation, rather, I'm sorry. On uh, any specific item, or all of them. Uh, do you recall when you did the all the items, I guess? Uh, so, most of the items were collected in November. They were not transferred to the Madison lab until <coughs> the end of January. So I started, I believe January 31st was the first day that I started analysis. And then my report was written April 29th. So you started the analysis at the end of January? Correct. And you did your report in April, why so long? Uh, I generated 583 pages and my report's 15 pages long, so that takes a little bit of time. So you broke down the 583 pages into 15? Correct. Do you know where the items were kept prior to you receiving them? Yes. Uh, can you stay for the jury for the record? Um, our evidence technicians, when they came to the Madison lab, put them into uh, storage where all evidence is stored. Were the items sealed like they are now? Yes. And so I'm assuming you had to unseal them, get them out of the sealing packages to do the analyzation. Would that be fair to say? That's correct, yes. Uh, did you repackage the items after you were done yourself? Yes, I did. 
and did you return them back to where you had received them from or did you keep them at your uh, I think you said the Madison lab I'm based out of the Madison lab yes uh, typically when we're done with evidence we will return them to our evidence technicians who will then put them back into storage when the case is done the evidence is then returned to the submitting agency so the items are still at your lab is from your knowledge now yeah no well I, I asked that let me give you some clarity I asked that because you said at, at the completion of the case they would be returned to the agency that you received them from so I was kind of <coughs> trying to get clarity on that so do you know if they were returned to the agency you received them from already I believe they were so it'd be fair to say in this situation the the, the items weren't continued to be stored at the Madison lab that's correct A lot of these uh, DNA analysis, uh, I noticed that specifically DNA was analyzed for eight people. Would that be fair to say? Uh, sounds right, yes. Uh, one of your uh, analysis had a four-person mixture. Uh, were you able to determine... Uh, out of the eight DNAs that you ran, if if any of those DNAs were found on that specific item? Your Honor, I object that it's vague. I'm not sure which item he's referring to. I'm referring to, uh, it says, brim, brim of maroon winter style hat. What page are you on, please, sir? Uh, six. <laughs> Right, so you want the directing the witness to page six? Yes. That particular item? Yes, that's that's where I'm reading from, yes. Okay, thank you. Do you want, did you ask the question? Yeah, I said uh it, this one uh in particular, the one I'm referring to, has a four person mixture. Um did did your analysis identify any one of those four people? out of the eight DNA samples that you were analyzing? Uh, no, it did not. Would it be fair to say for uh, pretty much all the items that you did analysis on, there were at minimum two or three person mixtures? <laughs> Uh, no. And why would you say that? Uh, typically in our reports we lump the star mix samples together. If you look before that it will have items that were single source profiles. That's why I said the majority uh, or, or if not all. I didn't say every single one. I wouldn't say the majority, no. Certainly looks that way. Would it be fair to say that page 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 6, out of all those pages, only 3 
have single source and, and all the rest of them have at least two or three mixtures. Would that be fair to say? Um, no. And can you point out where the inaccuracy may be? Sure. In um, case I'm not being accurate. Yeah, on page six, uh, the first profile that you're looking at, cuttings of the apparent hair from the gas tank strap. That's a single source profile. That's one. Uh, the next, the next line, the cutting of the unlit end of the blunt is one. Two. Cuttings of the apparent roots from the hairs, which is. CC4, CC5, and CC8. So that's three items right there. So you're looking at the actual heading? That's correct. And is that is that it from? On that page, yes. Any other pages? Which direction is the books? Forward or backward? Uh, I don't consent to being called that name. We're going, we're going from page six. Are you asking single source profiles? To page seven. From page seven, do you see any single, single, single source? Or yes, I guess it would be called single source. No. From page 6 to 13, as you previously stated, uh, those are my star mix ones. So each one of those is going to be a mixture profile. So the majority of them have mixture prof uh, mixture, a mixture of persons? From those pages, yes. But there are many single source profiles before the star mix conclusions. <laughs> Do you recall who you turned uh, your report over to once you finished your uh, report? For technical review? I'm sorry, can you, can you repeat that? For a technical review? Uh, what, I'm, I'm referring to once you uh, had finished your written report. Do you recall who you turned that over to? Yes. Uh, can you state it for the jury and for the record? Uh, Kelly Gajewski was my tech reviewer. Can you spell that last name for the record? It's Gajewski, G-A-J-E-W-S-K-I. Thank you. <coughs> and do you know what happened to the written report from, from that point? Uh, after she reviews it, sent it back for edits, and then I fixed those. It was approved by her. Then it goes to a supervisor for an administrative review. Fix the edits. What do you mean by fix the edits? If there's any typos or anything like that, it'll come back. Or if I forgot to initial a page or something like that, I'll fix those and then send it back to her for approval. Uh, working with law enforcement, which, which you've stated you've done numerous times, in, in regards to the written reports, to your knowledge, are you aware of uh, officers taking a, a a creative writing course? Objection, relevance. Grounds. Oh, sustained. That's the fourth <coughs> question. Have you yourself ever took in a, a creative writing course? Objection. Relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Not relevant. Next question. Have you or anyone you know filed a complaint in this matter? <coughs> no. Would you consider yourself an injured party in this matter?
ever directly talk to the plaintiff in this matter? I don't know how I would talk to the state of Wisconsin. Can, can you repeat that? I'm sorry. I do not know how I would talk to the state of Wisconsin. It's an entity, not a person. Not, not a person, right. No further questions? One of the items you described as items CC4A, CC5A, and CC8A. Do you see that? Objection yes. leading. Overruled the witness may answer. Go ahead. Yes, I do. What do those items represent? Objection leading. Um, Overruled the witness may answer. <coughs> those are cuttings of the apparent root ends of the hairs that I took off the sweatshirt. I forgot to ask you about the hairs. Objection leading. Did you? I'm sorry, that was a statement. I'll move on, Your Honor. Thank you. You told Mr. Brooks on cross that you developed a single source profile for those hairs. Is that right? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. And it's leading the witness. Um, the objections are noted overruled. The <coughs> witness may answer. That's correct. Who was the source of those hairs on that sweatshirt? States exhibit number 84. Objection. Speculative. Overruled. Go ahead and answer. Darrell Brooks is the source. Thank you. As much as I would love to have another witness, I'm trying to break for the night because it is 549. So with that, I will give the instruction that I've been giving every night. Do you have any idea how long you anticipate your opening will be? Opening statement? Yes. Uh, I don't think it's any way to gauge how long it will be. Just be mindful, sir. It's not the time to make argument, opening statements, as I like to call them, and what the jury instruction references, it's the roadmap. So I will expect to hear a lot of the evidence will show, the testimony, things of that nature. If it turns into argument, that's what happens at the close of the case. What do you mean by argument? If you're trying to argue the evidence and what it means. No, I'm not um, trying to argue But this will be what basically to lay out what the defense what I would expect is for you to lay out what the defense or defenses uh, that you believe you'll be presenting evidence about will be. To kind of, again, give the jury a roadmap, an idea of what to expect as your witnesses come forward. Um, and then at some point, um, um, I don't know whether you will make a decision to testify or not, but we do have to have a conversation on the record about that. So if you could just give me an idea, would, if you are going to testify yourself if you think that would be at the beginning or at the end so I can gauge when to have that conversation with um, you. I don't know for sure yet at this point. Fair enough. So at some point I'll have that conversation with you though. All right. We'll see everyone at 845 tomorrow.